Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board-certified veterinary dentist, and we come to you every week on Wednesday to provide the veterinarian and the technician team some actionable things that you can use in your practice. And this episode is going to be a recorded episode that we've done in the past, not a podcast that we've recorded or not the Vet Dental Show, but actually some other information for you that we know you're going to enjoy. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll see you at the end of the podcast. By what age do we need to remove uh, the deciduous teeth in order to help the mandible grow? Uh, again, immediately, because any time you have that interaction between those lower canines and the palate, that mandible is going to bow. It's not going to grow rostrally. So you still are not giving the patient time to genetically reach its potential for mandibular growth if, um, if you don't extract those uh, right away. Uh, Alexandra, this is a good question. So um, is there any detriment to timing of extracting deciduous teeth at the time of surgery? It also occurs to me that I don't typically radiograph when performing these in a combination with spay and neuter. If, you, if you're extracting at, at around six months of age, if you're doing your spays and neuters at that age in your practice, then if you have a tooth that's there, that's one that's persistent, um, that's, you definitely want to get that out of there. It may be mo mobile, and all you have to do is, is take it out, but you definitely want to get those, get those out at that time. And again, if they're, if they're, if they're worse than that, if they're more involved, and they're causing trauma, then you want to get them out um, earlier than at the, that, that uh, time frame if you, if you catch them earlier. Uh, Kristen, is this composite technique a permanent fix or will you have to repeat? Uh, does this only work in young dogs uh, with erupting teeth? That's a great question. And no, it doesn't. It works in uh, adult dogs with palatal trauma, depending on how significant that that trauma is and where that tooth is on the palatal mucosa. But anytime you have an adult tooth, you want to make sure that uh, you're, you're referring these. This is not a procedure that you do in general practice unless you've had a lot of training. And I, I do get questions about that in the group where um, there'll be comments that, that say, well, um, you know, Dr. Beckman just he, he has a contention that everything needs to be referred and that couldn't be further from the truth. <clears throat> we are empowering you as a general practitioner to do the things that we feel are going to benefit your patients the most, and that is surgical extractions, periodontal therapy uh, from a, from a mod moderate standpoint, nothing advanced, uh, and <clears throat> the mainstay of your practice is surgical extraction. So we want you to be really good at that, and we're more than more than encouraging and we, everything that we do out there is to help the general practitioner get better at what they do and make them successful in their practice and especially successful for their patients and the owners of those patients. So I, I um, would never not recommend that you do something that is at your skill level, but we've got people uh, very likely here uh, and if you are listening, you know that you're not ready to do a mandibular first molar on a, on a dog. You know that you're not ready to do a, man, a mandibular canine. You may even know that you're not ready to do a flat procedure on a maxillary canine. Or you, you may be where you're very experienced. And in most cases, if you are, we might and probably have taught you how to get to that, that experience because we, not saying this to boast, but we are the biggest provider of veterinary dental education uh, in the world uh, as far as um, all of our courses and our prolific nature of giving a lot of the things that we do uh, away to you guys so that you can benefit from them. So when I say this is something that you should refer, <clears throat> if you are, you've had our courses, if you're in our mastermind group, if you're in the veterinary dentistry practitioners program, that may not apply to you. However, we have a lot of beginners in there as well. So. That's why I say that. It qualifies things. It makes sure that we're not getting into trouble by taking on something that we're not comfortable with as individuals. So glad you brought that up.
everyone will ask this, Lynn, and that's probably a good representation. There's a lot of people that ask the same questions as I just said. So um, if when you have a fragile looking mandible, is it best to dispense antibiotics and pray that it'll work? Um, that's, that would be nice. Uh, that would be really nice. But if you're in general practice and you see one of those cases like Lynn's talking about, where there's been destruction of the mandible uh, in any respect due to osteomyelitis stemming from the tooth or otherwise, unless the source is removed, and in the cases we talk about, it's all a non-vital tooth, unless the source is removed, that uh, antibiotics are not going to do anything long-term for that patient, and it will only progress. Uh, so you want to get that tooth out of there. You want to get that patient referred. Uh, if the owner can't do that, you do not want to put yourself in a situation where you're uncomfortable uh, with extraction. But, um, you know, it may be that you're borderline where you feel that you've done a lot of the first molars, uh, which was what we, what we showed in this case, and that you're comfortable doing that. So if you are, then you can help that, that owner and you can help that patient. And that goes back to your training. Uh, if, you, if you're frustrated now in practice because you can't help some of these, pa these patients and some of these things that we've talked about, maybe you're in that lower uh, exposure echelon where you're just getting into this or you've had very little training, uh, that's where that veterinary dental practitioner program comes in. You know, the investment in time and the investment in uh, your monetary resources is that. It's an investment. It, investments pay off. They're, they're profitable if you make the right investment. So consider that strongly if you're in this group and you're thinking along those lines. And so um, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about that here in a second, about a specific instance uh, that is with our, one of our veterinary dental practitioners who just got through the program and got through it pretty quickly and uh, what, his, what his numbers are in his practice and what this can mean to you. What extra precautions do you utilize when extracting a tooth in a precarious situation where jaw fracture potential is high? Um, Blake, the, the technique that we use for that is the same technique that we use to, that we teach in our wet labs to extract the mandibular first molar. In, in a case like that, you may want to go down a little bit more apically, uh, but if you have not been exposed to that technique, then I would not recommend that you approach that tooth under those circumstances. And if you are comfortable with that, then it's probably not that much more difficult and not that much more dangerous, especially with that one that you saw. Um, if the apical portion of that root is right next to the cortex, then that's a different story. But when you've got a larger dog, which those were, and the apical portion is considerably coronal to the ventral cortex, then that's your concern is the ventral cortex. So um, not, not as much of an issue. And the mandibular canal is, is, sits further ventral on that tooth root or surrounds that tooth root further ventrally. So it's less of an option, or it's less of a, of a chance that you're gonna have problems. Uh, with that. So uh, dep again, depends on your skill level on what, what, uh, what you're going to do there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There's a lot of actionable items in there that you can take and use in your practice immediately. So put those to work and enjoy the benefits for the practice lifetime in your dentistry service. And if you would, please go to iTunes, leave a rating and review, take a picture of that with your cell phone, and then post it on the Vet Dental Show Facebook page. Just go to Facebook, search Vet Dental Show in the search in the upper left, and the show will come up. And once you post that, we'll send you a free instrument use essentials course. So if you want that free course, again, all you have to do is go to iTunes, leave a rating and review, Take a picture of the rating and review with your phone and then post it on our Facebook page, The Vet Dental Show. So until next week, have a great week. Take care, guys.